Hey guys, it's Zamai Gardner, and today I'm going to be doing just a brief overview of everything that's been kind of going on. And a lot has changed, and a lot of it's for the good, so I'm pretty excited to come to you guys today to get to show you the changes that have been happening. And the one thing is that you'll notice that the grow room is slowly starting to empty out, which is a great thing. As you guys can see, the new tomatoes are coming along fantastic. I'm going to come over here and show you guys what I'm talking about. They look pretty much similar to last year now. Um, again, last year I was already out in the greenhouse with flowers and one gallon pots, but um, as you guys can see here, these are the older, scragglier ones. Those are the Jersey Devils, the ones that were just really bad that I decided to keep because I wanted them. Uh, but back there, there's more Jersey Devils, as you guys can see, and some... Uh, some other varieties as well so those are coming along really really great and I'm definitely excited to to get those into the ground next is my mega hot super hot peppers these some of these are not really super hot um, but like the Tekken Sume is just a, a hard to find variety and then the Peruvian yellow is hot but it's not a super hot but if you look there there's a Carolina Reaper Carolina Reaper um, there is a seven pot Jonah back there. That is a really, really hot one. And then I have a red habanero back there. Um, so yeah, we, we have, we have quite a few, uh, super hot varieties. The onions are coming along really, really great. They're doing just what they're supposed to do. Um, granted they're going to do better once they get outside, but I needed to transplant them. So, uh, but they're doing really good either way. I'm, I'm quite proud of, of their growth so far. And um, and then you might be wondering what's in these bags. Well, in these bags are some cuttings. And they came from uh, the USDA uh, germplasm repository. Uh, basically a really scientific word for... They basically save heirloom varieties that they don't want to go extinct. And they take cuttings of those heirloom varieties. And they will distribute them... Um, if you request them for free, um, now there is special there is special circumstances. They don't give them to just every other gardener. Um, I agreed that I was doing a heirloom garden to preserve the the genetic biodiversity of of some plants. So here I have a red pear, and then um, this is a what is this one? This is a pineapple pear. And as you guys can see, um, uh, they are starting to bud. Um, it's really humid, but that's really good because that's what they need to to root very well. Um, I'm gonna knock this down, and you, as you guys can see, they are they're putting on a lot of growth, so they're growing very very well in there. And then over here, you can see this one, and there's a couple couple plants in here. There's three in here that are rooting, and then this is a yellow cherry plum. So these are doing really, really well as well. Uh, and this is the only pepper plant that I have of this variety. It's called Prairie Fire. The, um, if you look over here, the yellow multiflora, again, the only yellow multiflora I have, so I've been babying this one. It's in a one gallon trade pot, looks pretty good. Then over here is the test between trifecta and bone meal and blood meal. And as you guys can see, it still is undoubtedly a, you know, I mean, I, I still cannot explain how proud I am of these results. Um, again, here you have the bone meal and blood meal, and uh, again, nothing has been done to this. I mean, it is putting out some flowers. It's looking pretty nice. I'm definitely not disappointed with it. But if you look at the plant, it's just, uh, it's really weak. I mean, not really weak, but it's just got really small flowers, or really small leaves. Sorry, but I mean, if you look at this one. This is the, the Trifecta Plus one, and this is just, I mean, the side growth, the bushiness on this is just ridiculous, and it's just super woody, and I am I have no complaints with that. Um, coming over here, this is more tomatoes. These are the rest of the lanky ones. Uh, this is the Celebrity. These ones are Celebrity, and then these ones are called Money Maker. I grew them last year with massive success so I decided to plant a few this year as well 
And then over here is the last of the tomato varieties. They're all doing really, really great. And I'm really proud of them so far. They've come up to speed very nicely from the setback that I had. All right, so now I'm gonna go outside and show you some quick changes that have been happening outside as well. All right, as you guys can see, I have the bed all planted up here. And uh, it's pretty cold out still. Um, it got down to about 35 last night. So it's definitely cold. But I have my red lettuce here. Some of my red lettuce, not all of it. And then I have some of my romaine lettuce here. And it turned out really, really well. I was pretty, I was pretty impressed with it. And then I'm gonna come in here. We'll see that I got all my peppers planted up. And yes, it's pretty dysfunctional still. But once we start getting the tomatoes in here and things start growing, it'll all, it'll all even out. Um, those are all tomato plants that were pretty rejected. Um, all these are the the rest of the lettuce plants, which I don't know what I'm gonna do with them all. Nah, so many, but I'll be giving some away to friends and family, and then I'll also be finding other places to plant them. Um, but yeah, lots of peppers, lots and lots of peppers, and we're gonna go out back now. All right, and as you walk up to here, you say, "Whoa, what is new with this garden?" Well. As you guys can probably see, I put some chicken wire over this. And this was because last year, I had the hardest time with uh, with rabbits and deer. So, as you guys can see, this is my, about my mid-stomach, my chest high. So, it's very tall, four feet. And uh, I have it secured with this little, uh, little snow dowel, I guess. And you just pull it up, and then just swings open and then I can just uh, stick it in the ground and it stays so that's how I get in the garden here and then we have our little pathway yes it is closed off here but it all works I have more romaine here interplanted with some Swiss chard all this is my red Russian kale as you guys can see that's growing up really nicely it's still small but it's growing and then over here is my test bed with the blue curled scotch kale and I'm using the uh, the forest mulch method, and it's growing really great. I have no complaints with this bed whatsoever. And then coming out of here and walking around, we have the garlic bed. The garlic has grown so much since spring has sprung, and these tops are looking just very beautiful. Nothing has uh, died over the winter, which is really good. And I also did plant some beans here, which looks like something has gotten into them. But I planted quite a few, so uh, it looks like they'll be fine. Oops, some of these have came out. We had a lot of rain. We had a ton and ton, ton of rain. A couple inches. We had, I think, probably at least four to five inches of rain. So, considering that was rain, that's almost too much. And then this bed also has the treatment of the chicken wire. Uh, this bed is all spinach for now uh, once the spinach dies off we'll probably put some beans in here so yeah i got spinach in this bed and it's all really great it's pretty healthy so far i just planted it about two weeks ago i don't i'm not sure if i brought you guys along for it or not i can't remember but um but yeah so everything that's going to be uh able to be eaten by rabbits or deer has the chicken wire on it then this bed right here has a little bit of chicken wire on it because i planted some more blue curled scotch kale here but I need to get some more chicken wire to finish this bed. But the carrots are gonna go here, and then potatoes are gonna go there. Then right there, we're gonna have a big pepper bed. That bed is going to have uh, tomatoes, and that bed is going to have um, either beans, or we're gonna put zucchini in that bed. And then this bed will have cucumbers, along with that bed over there with the trellis, that we're gonna grow cucumbers up there. And then, as always, we're gonna have the herb bed right there. And then all those beds will be uh, bush beans, but we need more chicken wire. And then back here, our one change, our one major change is back here at this bed. And all this, this entire bed back here will all be potatoes, one big potato patch. Um, we're gonna plant them in, in rows. As you guys can see the little hills here, those were where I had tomatoes planted. But I'm gonna separate all that out, make a big trench, and I'm gonna plant the potatoes in there. 
Same thing with here, plant potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. And it's all gonna be potatoes. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. Hopefully you guys remember to grow big or go home. And as always, this is at my gardener. Talk to you guys later. See ya, bye.